Dear friends, welcome to the second recording uh, on tips and pearls in critical care. Today's session is extremely exciting. It's eye-opening and therefore I want you to pay attention right up to the end. As an intensivist, time is very short and we must learn to make use of any clues that we have either at the bedside or in the laboratory values, the simple laboratory values that are available to us to quickly narrow down the differential diagnosis. We like to call this approach the Sherlock Holmes approach to critical care. And for 20 years, we have been teaching our students this Sherlock Holmes approach to critical care. Today, I'm going to give you a glimpse into how the thinking is. And I've chosen a topic which is uh, common, which is, uh, you know, all of you are familiar with electrolytes. Electrolytes, whenever there's an electrolyte abnormality, the mistake we make is to just look at that electrolyte and think of differential uh, diagnosis and try to rule them out. If there's a problem with sodium, we don't look at the potassium or chloride. We look at just the sodium. And this is a missed opportunity. Electrolytes are like friends. They always go hand in hand. So if the sodium falls, the potassium should also be expected to fall and so should the chloride be. When electrolytes have a falling out, that means one goes in one direction, the other goes in another direction. That is a very useful clue at the bedside to narrow down the differential diagnosis. And I'm going to give you a few examples. Suppose sodium falls, but the potassium goes up. This is called a low sodium, high potassium pattern. And there are very limited differential diagnosis. There are three diseases you should think about and three drugs. The three diseases are adrenal insufficiency, renal failure, and diabetic ketoacidosis. And the three drugs are potassium sparing diuretics, ACE inhibitors, and some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like indomethacin. You, it's very easy to now narrow down, narrow down the differential diagnosis and to exclude these possibilities. Let's take another pattern. Suppose the sodium is low, but the chloride is not. The chloride goes up. Whenever this happens, that the sodium and chloride are going in opposite directions, the clue is always look at the anion gap. Let me give you an example. In this case, the sodium is 120, it is low, but the chloride is 118, which is not low, it's high. When you have this, you have to look at the anion gap, which is sodium minus the chloride minus the bicarbonate. In this case, 120 minus 118 is just 2. So for all practical purposes, for any bicarbonate value, your anion gap is going to be very low or in all probability is going to be negative. And when you have a very low or a negative anion gap, you need to rule out multiple myeloma, lithium toxicity, and various other causes of electrolyte abnormalities that we will talk about in another video. So I hope you've learned that in the Sherlock Holmes approach, it makes us, you know, it makes us able to narrow down the differential diagnosis at the bedside and to do it with data that's available to us. Simple electrolytes, ABGs, these are available to us. And it more importantly, it makes critical care medicine very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this video like the previous one. I love the comments that you wrote. I love more importantly, the suggestions you gave for topics that you'd like covered and please keep them coming and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.